This is Elia Blavrovsky. What do you want for me? Welcome. Thank you for coming. We, I, would, I wanted to meet with you and uh, chat a little bit. Oh, you are in the future, yes? Um, it's the year 2018. Very, very interesting. Yes, that's very interesting. What do you want to speak to me about? Uh, basically, we know the ideas you wrote about. And my main question was, uh, when you got on the other side, how did they change? Why, which of that was um, changed? How my, what's your new perspective when you, when you know more? Many things have changed in my perspective, but only for the better, not for the worst. But uh -huh. for, the thing is, there are many things that I taught that were very true in essence, but mm -hmm. in, when it comes to spiritual essence, the truth is all there, yes. But the, some of the actual facts to lead to the truth that caused the great uh, positivity were a little altered, but I still maintain that everything was um, honest as far as I knew. So everything worked out well for me, but there are factual changes that I would have liked to have known back then. But spiritual mm -hmm. changes, there are none. I see. How do you see the incarnation uh, right now? Uh, uh, is, it, um, is it any different as you, from, from what you described? Incarnation is very similar to what I described because it cannot be very much different than that. And um, it is what it is. And yes, it, it very much maintains what I said. So when the person dies, um, what happens to his personality? Is it then incarnated and gets dissolved or is it, is it completely independent or is it partially independent? The personality goes to the Oversoul, but it is a separate entity of the same soul. Just uh -huh. as God has many facets to his personality, our soul has many personalities as well. But if we bring them back, then we are uh, psychologically demented. But if we only uh, have one personality at a time, we are fine. But you must understand we were different people in different ages, and those personalities are still with us in some ways, so that we may call on them and use them for our own benefit, if that is what is necessary. And we must also be able to find our positivity that matches with this present lifetime, if that is what we need, or we need to cleanse the past if that is what is necessary. But yes, they all have their own distinct personalities, but we may choose and pick the personalities we, in the Oversoul that we would like to return to in some ways, think about, uh, reflect on, or use to be our guides in um, learning in many respects. And... Um, I choose this life a lot because of the of uh, Hutkumi and the learning of that he was the kind of man that he was. He was very inspiring to me, very incredibly spiritual without being um, haughty or indignant or conceited. He was very humble yet incredibly intelligent and wise and so he makes me he makes me a better person because i was um i felt like i was weak before him he kept telling me i was a strong person but i also felt very weak around him because he was so much stronger than i was wonderful uh is it possible for uh, uh a new incarnation to have um uh, to be um, uh, to have be, to be a hybrid incarnation when multiple souls incarnate in one person creating a new well a new it's not that they have multiple souls but there is poor well there, when a walk in comes in there is the original soul has to be present that is all that is necessary other 
other other entities can come and visit the body, the personality, the soul, influence it and such the like, but when re but not in its complete and there is no complete soul there. It's more like a, a portion of the personality comes to be with that soul <laughs> to guide it or direct it or to help it or whatever is necessary for that particular lifetime. Um, I was very honored to know some of these people and channel with them in the sense that I knew who they were, that they were carrying around with their original soul and could speak to them and understand why they were there and to, um, understand the meaning of uh, and understand how they were able to be together and not yet be all uh, entire souls intermingled, but the, the original soul with the visitors of the walk-ins and they do not bring their soul when they walk in because they are only there temporarily. I see. So uh, it is very frequent when people um, discover that they are, they are reincarnations of famous people. And it just, you have now, you know, millions of people and many of them are, seem believe that they're incarnation of someone famous. And it seems to be like um, an overstretch. Is it likely that like say Cleopatra is now incarnated in uh, in uh, thousands of people, or is it a mistake, perception mistake? Yes, it's a perception mistake. They are wanting to be, they, re, they um, relate to their personality very strongly, and then, so they decide that that personality they will take on. But in many cases, they are deluded. I must tell you how it is. Yes, Cleopatra can be in more than one person, but not in thousands, not in thousands. She may be in maybe a couple people, one as a higher self and one perhaps as an incarnation, but she, she will not be in thousands of people. And these people will know it uh, by the authenticity of their, uh, you will know them by their authenticity of how they speak about this person. If you knew, if you knew that person, then you would know that it was Cleopatra. But if you do not know, you can be easily fooled. I see. Uh, another question I had: uh, uh, what, what what are you busy with right now? What's your work? What are you working on? I'm working on the many things with this particular world that you are in right now because um, they need much direction. There is many on your planet that needs awakening. They need, to, they need to be put in the right places. They need to be put in the right mindset. And many are very confused. And it is the work of negativity that is trying to keep them away from their missions. Fear-based thought processes are very, very popular on this planet right now. And they are trying to just stop as much light from moving forward as possible by telling them to be afraid and that they must listen, otherwise they will be harmed. So what is the mode of action? How do you actually work? What do you do? I go and, and put positive information in front of them. Many times I will look at their who they are and what they need to do and put videos or information on the computer that they need to see at that moment. And they are awakened a little bit by the fact that it is um, something synchronicity, uh, a synchronicity that they just thought it, um, makes them excited about um, uh, reading it and moving forward again. And it takes away the fear momentarily. And that's what I am working on, is to build a positivity that is not based on fear, based on information, based on spirit, based on love, based on the positivity that they must have within them to move forward. Very but nice. Cause synchronicity, synchronicity actions to happen for them so that they can be aware 
that the positivity is moving forward with them and they are not, they are not afraid. They should not be afraid. I recognize your uh, writing style. I recognize your speech. It's very interesting. Um, there is Thank a great you, recognition. I, I, oh, you I, recognize I, me? Yeah, I recognize you. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you. It's a great confirmation for me and it's, it's very warm. Um, I, um, can you describe the way how that work looks from your perspective? So you're not in human body, so... No, I'm not in human body right now because I think that I can do much more work and reach much more people from this place. Because at this place I can reach and work with many different people, whereas if they were just reading my book, they would not see the things that I would really want them to see. They would not be aware of the thoughts that I want them to be aware of. And this way, I can be very specific with everything that I want to do. So can you describe the technology, the, the mechanisms, how the spirit can control the synchronicities? What do you actually do? How is your work is structured? What's hard and what's easy? I have been, since I have been psychic for many centuries, on many places, in many places, then I can learn, I have learned how to manipulate uh, machinery, I've learned how to manipulate um, the different ways of movement in spirit so that it is possible for me to help without being there in spirit, but actually move things or control things in a very positive way. I would not want to do anything negative, of course, but I would like to influence it in a positive way and they allow me to do this as long as I do not force them to read what I have put in front of them, as long as I don't force anything. It is all up to free will what they do. It is all up to free will what um, they read and discover. But the synchronicity effect uh, can help them understand that there is positive beings working with them even when they are afraid. Um, are you spending energy? Are you spending your karma on creating those synchronicities? No, 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 no. Do not spend karma, no. I spend energy, but energy is eternal. God has eternal energy, gives everyone the energy they need for the work they need to do. It is not an expansion. It is not a draining of any sort. God has eternal energy and is willing to give it and, and, and as freely as we need it. So you don't have a specified budget on energy or amount of synchronicities? You no, can no, 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 no. <laughs> I invite you um, to, um, to work with me and send me messages. I invite you to work with my community of Hukola and friends. I am already tradition. working with some people within your community. Wonderful. Um, uh, what are your uh, sp friends and spirit? Who is in your team? Who are you associated with? The ones which we know. Are you still working with Kuthomi? I am working with him and I listen to his guidance always. Are you he with... Directly connected to God. And I wish to be directly connected to God as well. I have made more mistakes than he has, but still, I, my innocence is, I did everything in an innocent way because I believed what I was doing was absolutely correct and right. And so in that, in that manner, in that thought process, I was uh, blessed for everything that I had done. And I moved people forward in their thought processes and their spirituality. Are you working together with Yogananda and Babaji? Yes. As much as possible, they're very busy people. Uh, how much are you into aliens these days? I work with aliens, of course. I know who aliens are. I know the difference. I can, because of who I am, I can sense different energies. They may look human, but they are. I know the energy is different. I know the, uh, uh, who they are. I know the difference between a Uriel energy and a human energy and a, a Octorian energy, etc. So I will work with them as I know who they are and how positive they are and what their, their um, 
goals are for this um, particular time in your in your world? What are, what of the alien races are closest to you? Like uh, Yahel, Arcturians, Pleiadians, Syrians. Which one of those? I have an affinity for the Syrians and Arcturians. I well, see. they are very, very high. And Vendorians as well. They have a great gift of spirituality, of, of innocent honesty, upfrontness, and uh, the gift of very much love and giving, compassion. The more compassion they have, the greater I can connect with them in some ways because I actually, that was one of my failures as a human being. Sometimes I fail to give enough compassion and I was so intellectually locked into my thought process that love and things were a little bit foreign to me in some ways. I married an older man and our relationship was disconnected by age and by misunderstanding. He did not understand who I was. And so it made, it caused me to uh, shut down a little bit on the emotional side. Although I, I had many uh, thoughts of giving and thoughts of, but it was not out of emotion. It was more out of logic and intellect. Um, I believe you were an alien hybrid in your time. Yes. Which, which of the aliens uh, were in your physical genetics? Actually, I was more Uriel, Uriel. Did you say yeah, yellow or Uriel? Uriel, Uriel, yes. I see. Um, did you have um, alien contacts, uh, conscious alien contacts, uh, conscious, conscious contacts with the aliens in your physical life? Yes, occasionally I would bring them in, yes. And they were very helpful to me because I was, they understood what I was doing and the path that I had taken. So therefore, they're, they're, if they were on the same path as I was on, then we were able to communicate and work together briefly, not very not long periods of time, but we spent some brief times together uh, discussing uh, the directions we should go with this. And they were very helpful giving me positive directions and counseling. Uh huh. And um, the, new, the sixth human race uh, emerging, uh, how do you see its emergence? How can we recognize it? Are, these, are they already here? Which one? Which ones are there? Like the, uh, what are the signs of the new race? It is not emerging as much as you would want to think, unfortunately. Uh -huh. But it is emerging in some places. Uh -huh. It is a smaller, a shorter, more intellectual race, but it is also more telepathic and more um, empathic. Uh -huh. The aborigines of Australia are the closest to this, the new races you can find. Wow. So, so uh, there are, we, we see the star seeds in, in, the, in the Western world and many of them are autistic and actually cold and not empathic. They are cold and disconnected from the society. Yes, so, it is. Shame that many times when they have decided to come here for uh, purposes to help this uh, humanity, that they try to bring too much of the, their uh, gifts along and they receive or experience a great disconnect because they cannot all come in. They cannot all pass through. And so they have to make sure that they become third dimensional and ground themselves completely. And then if there is any gifts that have made it through, then they can use those. Wonderful, thank you. I, at, at, that, I, at that moment, I would like to uh, thank you for your uh, appearance and interview. And I would like to invite you to come again at guide us. And um, uh, could you invite next uh, uh, Santa Claus? I recently read about, uh, read the, um, no, I listened to Terence McKenna and there he pretty well described the idea that Santa Claus is 
a very powerful uh, spirit which was is much more ancient than Christianity and uh, it has lots of tradition which is still here around. So I wondered if he could, could come and... Uh, I do not know this Santa Claus, but I will see if he is able to come for you. I am not aware of who he is. It is one person I just did not look up, Santa Claus. All right. And, and uh, if, if, not, if he cannot come, then the next invitation would be to Fungi Network. Fungus Network, yeah. Fungus. Fungus ah, Network. All right, yeah. I understand. I understand. Thank you. Um, it was uh, very interesting talking to you. I hope that we were able to uh, bring you some information that you needed. Uh, I am very much happy to help whenever you need. Thank you very much. Your help is uh, welcome. Thank you very much. I will go for now. Thank you. Have a good time uh, of the <laughs> eternity. That's a silly thing to say. But really? I, really? Uh, how would I say that? Uh, have a is, good uh, moment is, of the eternity. It is impossible not to have a good time here. All right. But I understand. Calling these who he has suggested.